What's up everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Game Dev. In this episode I'm going to be taking a look at the actual shader and implementing this and accessing some variables from in our dark class here. Uh, so first things first what we need to do is we actually need to add a new dependency for this and we're going to add vector uh, math Oops, can't spell today any you can just add that in there uh, if, if this screen doesn't show up you can just change what you're opening it with right now I'm opening it with the dart YAML, YAML editor so you can just set that up uh, I'm also going to be taking out the perspective matrix and the model view matrix for this episode in the uh, vertex shader here just because we want to see the actual position I don't feel like adding extra variables here so there's that um, next up what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the start function because this we just want to run once so we need a render function as well so we're going to call window dot uh, request animation frame and we're going to call the function render so let's just create that void render double time okay and then call it again here so this will make an infinite infinite loop so when it starts called it'll run this function and this function will just keep running itself we actually want to take this clear color and stick it in here as well Next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, actually we're going to add in those those imports that we added. So we need to, first off we need to add dart.math, because we will be doing some mathematical operations. Uh, we should also add in dart type data, and finally that package that we import, package vector, oops, vector, and it's this one, the vector math.dart right there. Just import those and they'll be gray because we're not actually using them right now. Uh, we'll also need to add a new variable here. I'm just going to add a localized shader so we can change it on the fly. And we'll set it up right here. Test shader. So that'll just set the shader object equal to this test shader here, which will automatically compile and stuff for us. Uh, next up, we need that post location, if you recall here. So that's what we're actually using for the, vec for the uh, vertices here. So we'll set that up here. So we're going to say, uh, we'll just create a var, do it right here. Post location equal to gl.getAttrib, which stands for attribute, which is what we're using, because that is an attribute, and shader.program, and then just the name we gave it in the shader program, so that was a post, right here. Uh, now we need to tell it that that's going to be our vertex data. We're going to say gl.enable vertex attrib array post location. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, next up, we actually need the vertex data, so we need to know where what the coordinates are for our x y and z uh, so we're only using x y z again right now vec3 so we have, we'll create that right here and we'll make them floats uh, float32 list vertex data equals new float32 list dot from list and we're just going to stick an array in here just because it's a little easier to read for us so we're going to set the first values to 0.0, .0 uh, negative 1.0 and 0.0 .0. So that'll be that one. Uh, next one, we're going to do 1.0, 1.0, 0.0. .0. And the last one, negative 1.0, 1.0, and 0.0. Now we're going to do this because this is a triangle and everything in WebGL is rendered in triangles. So we'll need to set up some, some method of actually creating quadrilaterals out of a triangle. And a quadrilateral would take two triangles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create an index buffer. And this buffer is going to allow us to actually call the order in which the triangles are actually rendered. So when we do have quadrilaterals, we can render the first vertice, the second vertice, and the third vertice, and then subsequently the first vertice, the third vertice, and the fourth vertice. So that one will be an int 16 list. That'll be index uh, data. Int 16 list from list. Now again, since we're only using a triangle, we can just do 0, 1, 2 for now, just to say that we're only doing 0, 1, and 2. We'll just draw it like that. So next up what we need to do is we need to use some buffers to actually um, tell GL what data goes where. And this this first one is this is called the array buffer. It's just going to allow us to represent the intent to use that buffer for vertex data. So we're going to say gl.bind buffer. So we're just going to create a new one here. It's going to be gl.array buffer. Array buffer. There it is. And gl.create buffer here just to clear it out and set it to a new one. And now we actually uh, create it here, so we're going to say buffer data typed. We're going to say gl.array buffer. The data is going to be vertex data. And the usage is just going to be gl.static draw. That's just how we want to draw it. Next up we need the index data, so again as I told you, the order in which we're going to be drawing these vertices. So we're just going to call gl.bind buffer again, but this time it's going to be element array buffer. And gl.create buffer. Oops. 
Okay. Now we actually need to add that one as well. So buffer data typed gl dot element array buffer index data and again gl dot static raw. Perfect. Uh, last and not least, oops. Last and not least for this, we actually need to say the uh, a post. We need to just set the pointer to it. So this is just going to tell us uh, how many numbers are in here and the order in which we're doing them because we can have more vertex data like we can add textures in here and colors specific vertex colors but right now we're just using positions so we just want to say that we only have three of them and etc cetera, etc cetera. so what we're going to do is we're going to say gl dot uh, vertex trip pointer and this is going to be post location we're only having three because it's a size of three so there's three different three total uh, the type is going to be gl dot float because they're all floats uh, normalized we don't need and stride and offset we don't need at all either okay so next up we're gonna go into the render function because that's all our setup data here uh, so we go into the render function we're actually just gonna draw it so, but first we need to use the shader and then we could just go gl dot draw elements and we're in mode gl dot try angles uh, the count is gonna be three the type is gonna be gl dot unsigned short and the offset's going to be zero. So now if everything works out as it should, uh, we should get a little s triangle popping up. I'm actually going to change the color of it just because white is a very ugly color. So let's just go like 0.7. And if I run the main file here, everything should work out and we should have a nice triangle drawn on our screen. Perfect. Now we have a nice pink triangle. So that's that, we're drawing our first triangle here. Uh, next episode I'll actually be adding some extra data in here like the perspective matrix so we can move this triangle around a little bit. Uh, so I will see you guys then, thank you for watching, have a good day.